probably right. They're probably all just coincidences. They have to be. Jerry, what is it? You okay? What's wrong, sweetheart? I heard a scream. What happened? Princess, what's happening? Edge was taking over. It's the beginning of the end. Oh my God! It's Charity. What did you do to her? So far, so little. You know, if I wanted to, I could be done with her just like that. But that would be showing off and not nearly as much fun as this is. Hecuba, you are really twisted. And this, from a girl who traded her soul to jump into bed with a boy who isn't even interested in her. Just because I don't want charity with Miguel doesn't mean that I want you to hurt her. Newsflash, Kay. I don't give a darn what you want. I'm going to destroy charity. <laughs> Is it possible that you feel what I do? All I know is I never felt this way before. I knew Mama was worried for nothing. Everyone's accepted that we're getting married, even Gwen. Hurry up and find those files so that we can prove that Ethan is not a crane. What's going on with you, Pilar? What's on your mind? Well, Gwen's mother accepted defeat far too graciously. She's up to something, Ivy. Here it is. The key to my future as the next Mrs. Julian Crane. Ivy, you think you've been so clever passing Ethan off as a crane all these years. But your day of reckoning is here. <laughs> your secret is about to be exposed, and no one's life will ever be the same. Manufacturing problems, Pilar. You're not going to tell me that you trust Rebecca Hotchkiss. <laughs> Hardly. Rebecca is the most transparently conniving, two faced hypocrite I have ever met. But still, in all, Ethan has made his choice to marry Teresa, and there's not a damn thing Rebecca can do about it except stamp her foot, throw a few tantrums, and use herself in Julian's bed, if you can imagine. I'd rather not. 
Uh, still, that's the least of your concerns if Rebecca finds out about you and Sam. What are you going to do if she discovers that Ethan is Sam's son and not a true crane? <laughs> well, I hardly think that's possible, Pilar. All the papers that prove that Ethan is Sam's son have been destroyed. I'm not aware of any other smoking guns lying around. Will you excuse me? I need to speak with Teresa. Could you excuse us, please? Sure. Mama, I feel like I was born to wear these pearls. Never mind that now. I need you to come with me. Oh, come where? Mrs. Crane's bedroom. You said you were going to get the computer out of there as soon as we got to the house. You're right. I, I, I just got so carried away in all the excitement, I almost forgot. But there is no rush. No one has any idea what's on my laptop. Yes, but I would be much more at ease once it's in your possession. Mama, I promise I will do it. But not this second. I don't want to leave Ethan's side for a minute. Just the man I was looking for. Um, I'd like to ask you a favor. Uh, well, sorry, son. I'm all out of family heirlooms to give to your fiance. That wasn't what I was going to ask you. I was wondering if you'd be the best man at our wedding. At your wedding? I, I surely, uh, 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 this time to work out the details. Uh, Not really. We want to get married right away. <clears throat> no, you can't do that. Now, just have to load this on a disc. Mrs. Hodgkins, what are you doing in here? I wanted Charity out of the way so that Miguel could fall in love with me, but I didn't want her physically harmed. You'll be singing a different tune when Miguel holds you in his arms. No, it's not worth it. There's nothing you can do to stop it. You're wasting your breath. And this is just the beginning. Charity's going to be doing a lot more than just screaming by the time I'm through with her. Lisa, what? what? Sweetheart, sweetheart. Well, what did you see? Lisa, I saw the word death written in blood on the wall. Where? Right there where you cleaned it up where it was bleeding before. Honey, it was just the paint. <laughs> There's nothing there now, Charity. Charity, you must have imagined it. And I don't blame you with all the freaky things that have been going on lately. Jessica's right. All right, you're very sensitive. And after all the birds last night and the paint coming through the walls, it just shook you up. This is all Hecuba's handiwork. She's just toying with Charity, trying to figure out how strong her powers are. But Timmy thought Charity's powers were no match for Hecuba's evil. Well, so far they aren't. And that poor girl, she has no idea that she's doomed. I've got it. I can explain everything that's happened. Guys, look, Reese is right. There is a simple explanation for what Charity thinks that she saw, at least for the red stuff that was seeping through the walls. I mean, that's what Dr. Russell is doing right now. She's having it tested to see exactly what it was. And I am sure that we'll all find out that it was paint and not blood. Yeah, but what about Charity reading the word death on the wall? Well, there's no big mystery there, sweetheart. Have any of you guys ever looked up in the sky and saw a cloud that, that you thought was in the shape of an animal? 
Well, the, the word must have come to Charity's mind, and she imagined it being spelled out on a completely blank wall. Now, I hate to disagree with you, Chief Bennett, but what transpired here today isn't the first time it's ever happened. What exactly are you saying, Reese? Well, apparently, the same thing happened in a small town in England hundreds of years ago. It was all blamed on two witches. Damn that little computer. He's found out about my past. Uh-oh. Princess has been keeping a secret. If I take my eyes off you, you'll disappear. Not a chance. I'm not going anywhere. That's what I thought last time we were this close. And, and I almost lost you for good. I'm so sorry I put you through no, that. No, it's not your fault. I should have told you. You know, when I thought that I almost lost you for good, I blame myself. For getting so involved and for wanting you so much and feeling I couldn't live my life without you. Please don't be afraid of loving me. It's because of your love. It's what got me through my darkest hours. With it, I feel so strong, like I can, I can do anything. Anything? It brought me back from the dead, didn't it? I'm sorry, Gwen. I I probably shouldn't be talking about this right now. No, I'm sorry. I, I had no right to say anything. You and Teresa are entitled to make any wedding plans you choose. We are not going to elope. I love Ethan and believe in his love with all of my heart. So there is no reason for us to run off and get married right away. I, I'm not afraid of losing him. And you shouldn't be. I'm not going anywhere. We'll just see about that. So, how about it, Father? Will you be my best man at my wedding? Uh, Under the circumstances, don't you think it would be a better idea to ask one of your friends to do it, dear? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Ivy. Of course I'd be honored to stand up at my son's wedding. Thank you, Father. <laughs> the wedding will take place over my dead body. Now, um, if you will all excuse us, Teresa and I are going to go tell Sheridan our news. Oh. Hurry, Mother. Proving Ethan isn't a real crane is the only way I'm going to be able to stop this wedding. You said you were going to the powder room. What are you doing in here? <laughs> My goodness, Bilar. Are all housekeepers as suspicious as you are? <sighs> Look, not that it's any of your business, but I prefer the powder rooms up here to the powder room off the library. That doesn't explain your presence in here. My daughter and I have had an extremely difficult 24 hours. Is it so much to ask to want to have a moment alone? Well, you are welcome to all the privacy you want in any of the guest rooms in the East Wing. Uh, thank you very much, but uh, I'm fine right where I am. Why? What do you want in Mrs. Crane's bedroom?
sure than I've ever been about anything in my life. I love you. I don't believe it. Maybe they'll go away. Maybe they won't. Who is it? Uh, Sheridan, it's me, Ethan. I'm with Teresa. Please tell me your nephew didn't just say what I thought he said. I'm sorry. What should I do? Tell him to come in, I guess. Waited this long with you. Wait a little while longer. Be right there. Who is that? It's my brother. Are you up to seeing him with Sheridan tonight? If he's up to seeing you with me. It all began in a modest home in a small town in England a long, long time ago. A town very much like Harmony. Anyway, really spooky things started happening, like in the middle of what seemed like an ordinary day, the sky turned very dark. But that's what happened here. Then ravens, dozens and dozens of ravens started crashing into the house. They were, they were coming through the windows, they were, they were coming down the chimney, they were everywhere. That's just like us. Talk about coincidence. Oh, and get this, right after the bird incident, blood. Real blood started seeping through the walls of the same house. Oh, sweetheart, it's all right. It's all right. Actually, it's not. No, that is enough, Reese. You're scaring everyone to death. Now, what exactly are you looking at anyway? Some sci-fi website? No, sir. It's reputed to be fact. <laughs> Lesson number one. You can't always believe what you read. Well, but, but, Sam, you have to admit, I mean, like Miguel said, it's an awfully big coincidence. And, you know, I have to tell you, this story sounds very familiar to me. You know what, I was thinking that too, and I haven't heard it before. They remember it because their ancestors lived through it. That was just the beginning. The witches went on to do some really horrible things. <laughs> I remember it as if it were yesterday. Fight to the finish between Hecuba and me. She wanted to possess the soul of a good girl who lived in the house. But I said, scram, you're poaching on my territory. So did she? Heck no. Hecuba's always been a stubborn, competitive pain in the... You know what? So, when she didn't back off, I unleashed my powers on her. Oh, Timmy... You should have seen your princess and what she could do back then. No! Leave me alone! What? Take this, you wanna be poaching witch! My eyes closed. You conceited crone. what plague Hecuba will raise. Without my powers, Timmy, who knows what plague Hecuba will rain down on Harmony. Happy New Year. Come on in, you two. Hi. Come on in. Thank you. Hey. Oh, please. Ah. Happy New Year. Oh, Happy New Year, sis. Anyone for a New Year's toast? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Please. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> Woo! Thanks. Thank you. You're 
Bianca? Got some? <laughs> Here's to the four of us being as happy as we are in this moment forever. 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 All our dreams come true. Mm. Mine already have. I can't wait for us to get to know each other better, Teresa. And thank you for making Ethan so happy. Sheridan, that means so much coming from you. I hope that we can be friends. I'm sure that we will be. Well, uh... I know we haven't always seen eye to eye. <laughs> There's an understatement. But I'm... I'm willing to start over for Sheridan and Teresa's sake. So am I. <laughs> Teresa... They look exactly like my grandmother's. Oh, that's right. Uh, go and give them to Teresa. I don't believe it. I, I mean, I know how excited Gwen was when she thought they were hers. Well, I, I didn't even have to ask for them back. Gwen insisted. I mean, she has been so gracious about this whole thing. I never would have thought it. You know, that doesn't surprise me about Gwen, but... Surely Rebecca's kicking up a fuss. Not at all. She's... she's been really nice, considering how disappointed she must be. <clears throat> Teresa. <laughs> Teresa, those jewels are worth thousands of dollars. I know. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> You're not marrying Ethan because of the money, are you? Oh, of course not, Louise. I'm marrying Ethan because I love him. Okay. That's what I was hoping you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I came up to Ivy's room for some perfume. Well, you know, I've been so preoccupied with Gwen lately, I, I forgot to dab any on, and you know how that feels. I mean, you feel positively naked without it. Oh. But you wouldn't know how that feels. You'd probably get your scent from a roll-on. And here I was thinking I might be wrong about you. Oh? I was about to thank you for being so kind to my Teresa downstairs. I know that Ethan's engagement to her has not been easy for either you or Gwen. Hmm. Well, Gwen and I decided it was pointless to try to fight it. We just have to accept it and move on. I'm glad you feel that way. But I will be more at ease once Ethan and Teresa are actually married. Hmm. Yes, well, if you don't mind, I'd like to be alone to pick out some perfume. Oh, there it is. What? That is his computer. She's been looking everywhere for this. Damn you, Pilar! Gotta get that disc. The two witches shot bolts of lightning at each other until finally the whole house caught on fire. One of the women in the family died in the flames. Does it describe her? How old was she? It, it, it doesn't say. But, but it wasn't just a home that burned. The whole town was incinerated. Lots of people died. But not just from the flames, from the plague that followed. Plague? Locusts. Millions and millions of locusts. There was nothing left of the town but rocks and snakes. For centuries, no one went there. Legend has it that the two witches still live there. Oh, what good? 
good is the World Wide Web if they can't get their facts straight? I'm not still living there, and neither is Hecuba. That's why it's good HarperCollins is publishing Tabby's book. It'll set the record straight. Yes, well, I'll try and remember that while I'm being burned at the stake again. tailed out of England to the States with the remaining Standish women, and together we founded Harmony. But unfortunately for me, Hecuba followed. And now she wants to get back at me because she didn't like living in that cave. Maybe Tabby could just talk to her. <laughs> talk? Hecuba doesn't listen. She hates my guts. She won't be satisfied until I'm gone. Oh, no, Timmy. There's no way round this without my powers. We're doomed. Did you ever think that we'd be starting off the new year like this? You about to marry Ethan, me with Louise. My brother's a wonderful man, Sheridan. Oh, Teresa, you don't have to convince me. I admit it took me a while to learn about Louise's... Uh, finer points. But now that I have, I, I'm never letting him go. Well, he feels the same way about you. He was like a lost puppy when he thought that you were... I, I know. I, I thought that I had lost him forever, too. You know, I'm not really big on New Year's resolutions, but this year I made one. I'm going to spend the rest of my life every day, letting Louis know how much he means to me. <laughs> What's this for? <laughs> for loving my brother as much as I love your nephew. <laughs> you know, I know that people think that I'm overprotective when it comes to Teresa. Louise, I would be too. But she hasn't had a father for most of her life. So the role of protector fell to me. I've always looked after her. In part because she's such a dreamer. That's what I love most about her. I mean, she looks at the world with, with such fearlessness. Yeah, but that can be trouble, too. Look, she hasn't been around as much as you and I have. And she doesn't know what some people are capable of. I understand what you're saying here. But she's in good hands. I love her and I will never let any harm come to her. Well, starting a bit early, aren't we, dear? Under the circumstances, one might say it's a bit late. I'm going to need all the fortification I can get my hands on to make it through this obscenity of a marriage. God, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Well, I'm sure you're going to find a way. Because you'll remember the bargain we struck. I will help you and your father keep Louise and Sheridan apart. And you will leave Teresa and Ethan alone. Gwen! Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. We are shaking. Yeah, I, you know, I must just be really tired. Where the hell have you been? One minute you vow to do everything in your power to stop this train wreck of a marriage from taking place, and the next thing I know, you're showering good wishes on Teresa and disappearing as if her marriage to Ethan were a fait accompli. I even had to tell Ethan I'd be his best man. I'd rather be dead. <sighs> Johnny, just calm down. Okay, Ethan and Teresa aren't married yet. I know exactly what I'm doing. Hmm. You're starting to sound like my father. He always says you can... Get more flies with honey than vinegar. <laughs> yes, well, honey my foot. <laughs> I've got a far more high-tech solution for our problem. Jimmy, the princess going to go up in flames just like 
the rest for me? Darn tootin', flammable boy. Match anyone? <laughs> Lay off, Hecuba. I beat you fair and square way back in England, and here you are holding a grudge centuries later. Get over it, will you? Fair and square? Is that what you call condemning me to live in a dank, dark cave for hundreds of years? No. I've got plans for you two that will make life in a cave look downright cozy. Do you all realize that what Reese is reading is nothing but a fairy tale? You know, I'm not sure that's why it sounds familiar. What? Why, why are you staring at me like that, Charity? You're making me nervous. You should be nervous, Kay. tell you about the first time we met? I crashed into his police car. He hated me. <laughs> it was only because of your last name, which I now admit was not fair to hold against you. Or you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it had to have been the worst first meeting any two people could ever have. Well, I don't know. When Teresa and I re-met um, a year and a half ago, she dumped a bucket of paint on my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how strange is that? If I hadn't been in such a hurry and crashed into his car. Yeah, and Teresa being such a klutz. <laughs> None of us would be here today. I told you, fate brings people together, and fate keeps them together. Well, to fate then. To fate. Uh, to fate. <laughs> to fate. You obviously have a brilliant scheme up your sleeve or you wouldn't be this calm. Yeah, Julian, I can't give you all the details right now, but I promise you, Ethan is not going to marry Teresa. And as soon as I get what I'm after, you will be the first to know. Did you have time to make a copy or not? Yes, but Pilar walked in before I could get the disc out of the computer. So you mean it's still in there? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Pilar doesn't know it, but the means of her daughter's destruction is in that laptop she's carrying around. I gotta get that disc out of here before she gets out of the house. Pilar, I, I hate to bother you, but would you mind getting us a, a fresh tray of tea before you leave? Of course not. Pilar, you'll never be able to carry the tea tray and the computer. Why don't you just leave it here? Tabitha. What are Timmy and his princess going to do? I'm sorry, lad. I'm helpless without my powers. Hecuba can really do whatever she wants to us. But Timmy's too young to die. Oh. Charity, why'd you say that? Why should Kate be nervous? I'm not sure. Hey, you know, it's been an upsetting 24 hours for all of us. Look, I know you all think that I imagined the word on the wall, but I saw the word death written right there in blood. I've had enough of this. Kay, wait. Why do I have the feeling that you can explain all of this? You know what's going on around here, don't you? Happy New Year. Thank you very much. <laughs> Happy New Year. Bye. 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 See you later, brother-in-law. <laughs> Call and tell us your plans as soon as you work them out. Don't worry. You'll be the first to know. I love you, Teresa. I love you too, Louise. Oh. Nice. Seems so happy, don't they? Yeah, they do. You know, I didn't want to say anything to dampen their spirits, but uh, I thought for sure that Gwen, or at least her mother, would have put up a bigger fight about them getting married. Well, I'm not as worried about those two as I am your brother and father. 
that's true. Julian and Alistair have never been good losers. Then I guess I'm not the only one who thinks that Teresa and Ethan are in for it. All I know is that Ethan loves your sister very much. He'll do whatever he has to to protect her. Let's just forget about my family for the rest of the day and concentrate on us. Mm. Now, where were we? Well, as I recall... <laughs> I'm sure I can manage the tea tray along with the computer. But why don't you just leave it here? I mean, it's not as though it contains confidential government secrets. No, of course not. But it is Teresa's, and she has very important things on it. I promise I won't take my eyes off of it. All right, but please, just... Uh, Pilar, it is perfectly safe here with me. Excuse me. you uh, about a decorator um, that, that is featured in here. I think you used this uh, particular decorator. It's... Uh, 